The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and disciples. There they stayed for a few days. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the same Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 11, and I'm reading from the best translation that I have found of the Bible, the English Standard Version, and I have these Bibles if you'd like for your own spiritual edification. We read Jesus saying, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Our life as Christians has to do with finding joy in our life, not happiness. There is a difference between being happy and having joy. You think the family this week that I buried their 49-year-old husband and father who died of cancer is happy? No. No. Are you happy when you lose your job or when you get a sickness diagnosis? Are you happy when you get COVID? I don't think so. Uh -huh. Are you happy when this problem or this suffering comes in 
in your life? No. But we are called to have joy. And that joy for us has a name. Jesus. They ran out of wine today. Wine in the Bible has to deal with joy. When run, wine runs out, you run out of joy. And you notice in this particular gospel passage that the bride and the bridegroom don't know that they don't have wine. But Mary knows, and she goes and she tells Jesus. Mary knows, and Jesus knows before they do. God knows what you need before you ask him, the Bible says. Before you pray and open your mouth and tell God what you need, God already knows it. God knows what your need is. And God is responding and answering to your need, just like he did for this couple at the wedding feast in Cana. For that, you need confidence. And for that, you need trust. Because a life of faith has to deal with trust. That I don't know why this is happening or this has happened to me. But I trust. That's why this church is called Divine Mercy Parish. Divine Mercy Church. Because Jesus revealed to St. Faustina in Poland. Mm. <laughs> that our life of faith has to do with trust. And he first appeared to her in Lithuania, in Vilnius. We have a Lithuanian here. Uh, we have people from Lithuania coming, so I want to acknowledge that, that the first time Jesus appeared was in Lithuania, in Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. And then Faustina went to live in Krakow, Poland, which is where the Shrine of Divine Mercy is today. And Jesus appeared to her and said, put underneath the picture that I want you to draw of me, Jesus, I trust in you. That's why all of you should have a merciful Jesus in your homes. This is the most recognized picture outside of the cross in all of the religious world. There's no other religious symbol that is more prevalent throughout the globe outside of the cross than the merciful Jesus. Why? Because we need trust to have joy. You know, Faustina had a very basic education, a fourth grade education. She was from a very impoverished family. She went from convent to convent knocking on doors and nobody would take her because she didn't have a dowry. At that time, you needed to pay in order to become a nun. Can you imagine? And big bucks! And there was only one convent that took her and they put her to feed the pigs. Because she, yeah, and to get flour for the bread in the middle of the night. She was relegated to the worst jobs. The worst. Because in the eyes of the world, she was a nobody because she had no education. She was poor. She came from a poor family. But in the eyes of God, she was everything. And God chose her, not the mother superior who thought she was everything. Uh, uh, not some bishop or some big shot priest or monsignor or whoever to become his secretary. God chose Faustina. Why? Because of her simple faith. Because of her trust. And that's what I pray for each one of you. Stop with the sophisticated faith. The smarter you are, the dumber you are. Uh, the more sophisticated or more 
intelligent you think you are, the stupider you are. Mm -hmm. Seriously, you know, one of the prayers that my grandmother taught me to pray was the prayer to St. Michael, which I pray every day. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. And just recently, everybody, you know, we love to pray our prayers. We love our rosary. We love our statues and all the sophisticated people in the church. And just recently, the cardinal from Chicago, who thinks, you know, he knows everything, of course. Oh, my God, I'm getting recorded here. <laughs> but not that I care. Okay. You know, he banned, banned the prayer to St. Michael. Uh, yeah, seriously. Uh huh. You look at some of the churches around, you know, and even some of the ones in, in Vegas. You walk into it, it's like a barn. No statues, no nothing. And the priests, you know, if the people want a, another statue of, of Mary there, they say, you can only have one statue of Mary in one of the parishes I was at. One statue of Mary. I said, what, what's the big deal if the people want it? Are the two Marys going to fight each other? You know, how stupid. The more complicated you make it, the dumber you become. Keep it simple. Jesus, I trust in you. Stop trying to figure it all out. The smartest man to ever live before Jesus was Socrates, the Greek philosopher. And he said, the only thing I know is that I know nothing. Huh? Look at all the smart people in the world. So-called smart people. Huh? They end up depressed on drugs and committing suicide and trying to tell everybody else what to do. Huh? Banning prayers to St. Michael. If the people want to pray their prayer to St. Michael, let them pray the, pray the prayer to St. Michael. They want Mass in Latin. What do you care? If that's what's feeding them. But if you sit on your lofty throne, making pronouncements, thinking you know everything because you've got some sort of a title uh, or position, that's where the problems come in. Keep faith simple. I'll never forget, you know, traveling in, a, in, in an airplane and I had my Bible with me, the English Standard Version, of course, you know, because <laughs> seriously, that is the best translation because some of the ones, you know, they distort it horribly. And I'm reading my Bible in the airplane and here's a guy sitting next to me and, you know, he was some sort of a businessman or whatever because by the grace of God, I got... Uh, because I was late. <laughs> so, you know, God has a plan for everything. I was like late and they had only a few seats and so I got Economy Plus. Yeah, without paying for it. <clears throat> <laughs> and if you're on an airplane ride of 14 hours going to Poland, believe me, you want that Economy Plus. <laughs> or you want to sit in an exit row, okay? Oh yeah, I always try to get the exit row too because I call that the poor man's first class, okay? So I'm sitting there and I'm reading my Bible. And this guy was really well-dressed. He's a business guy, businessman. And he kind of, he's like this as I'm reading the Bible. He says, and you believe everything in there? And I said, of course I do. It's the Bible. It's the inspired word of God. Of course I believe everything in there. And he says, so you believe that story of Jonah in the belly of the whale? And I said, I just told you, I believe everything. Well, he says, well, how did that happen? How did, how did he survive? How did Jonah survive in the belly of the whale? I said, well, I don't know, I said. But if I, you know, if and when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him. And he thought he was smarter than me. <laughs> and he says, well, what if he's not in heaven? What if he's in hell? And I said, well, then you can ask him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, he 
thought he was smarter, but what he didn't know is that when he was walking, I already went and gone and came back. <laughs> anyway, it's a saying in Spanish. Uh, pa que, pa cuando, uh, anyway. <laughs> Keep our faith simple. That's what I'm trying to uh, get it to all of you. And let's stop uh, trying to figure everything out. Let me tell you something. Just a few things from the gospel reading today. Every crisis we learn is an opportunity in our life for us to become better. They ran out of wine. I'm speaking. What happened? They got better wine, didn't they? Huh? You know, the other day, uh, this guy says to me, he says, Father, you know, he was at the swap meet and uh, parked his car there, went into the swap meet, came out and somebody stole his car. And I said, oh, how horrible, how horrible. And he says, no, how wonderful. He says, my kids got together, threw in a bunch of money and got me a brand new car. <laughs> he says, I want to write a thank you note to the thief. Huh? Oh, yeah. See, we think a crisis is in our life for something bad. Why are you laughing, Barbara? Was that so funny? <laughs> the, the note to the thief, is that what got you laughing? <laughs> Control yourself. <laughs> uh, we think that every crisis in our life is something bad. Every crisis in our life has a purpose, but you, you need trust in order to get through it. A crisis is there in our life to walk through it tr truly, truly. Am I saying that correctly in English? Truly? I can never pronounce that in English. Cor uh, English is so hard to pronounce, okay? You have to walk through it truly. All of its stages and not to try to shorten it. Hmm? In other words, let me put it this way. Life is like a train ride, isn't it? Huh? And nobody gets out of the train in the tunnel. So why do you want to get out in the tunnel? You wait until the train leaves the tunnel. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And for that is required trust. That it's all going to be good. That God turns every bad situation around in our life. In God's time, not in my time. A crisis is there for something to die in, some, in order for something better to be born. Like, uh, this is a very simple example. Okay? My printer died. <clears throat> That's why I had to, I had to write my sermon by hand. Okay? And I mentioned this to somebody and they whipped out 300 bucks and said, Here, Father, get yourself a new printer. You know, it was a big crisis. But now I've got the money to get myself a really nice laser printer. Mm. Okay? See? The problem is we want to get out of the train in the tunnel. Like with alcohol. Yeah, you walk into more darkness. Or drugs, or sex, or pornography, or stuff. Huh? We don't care that it's dark. We just want to get out of the train. Stay in that train while it's dark. Psalm 23, Jesus says what? Well, God says in Psalm 23. So you'd know it if you read your Bible. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It doesn't say I'm stuck. You're not stuck there. You're walking. So don't go into the darkness. See, our big problem is that we don't want to wait. We like everything like that. You know, text messages, boom. ATMs, boom. Drive through and you complain. Huh? Even though it's drive through, you still want it even faster. Huh? Oh, yeah. You know, there, there, I was in a prayer, prayer labyrinth once. Have you ever been in a prayer labyrinth where you have to walk in a circle, you know, all around? And I'm walking in the prayer labyrinth, and there was this 
another priest was behind me in the prayer labyrinth, and he's like, walk faster! <laughs> in a prayer labyrinth! We want it all fast. We are in the microwave culture. Mm. You know, they even sell pants now. I saw them. I was shocked. Okay. They even sell pants now with holes in them. Yeah. The jeans with the, with the holes in them. Why? I was asking. I said, Lord, why do they sell jeans with holes in them? It's because people don't want to wait to get holes in their jeans. <laughs> they want the holes right away. Huh? You have to get it all right away. And God is asking you for patience. God's working it all out in God's time. Whatever situation you're going through, huh? you just have to wait and trust. Huh? So how wonderful that they ran out of wine. Because had they not, the wine from heaven would have never arrived. Huh? Are you saying that right now? How wonderful that I've had this problem or have this problem. Because if it wasn't for that, uh, the wine from heaven could not and would not and will not arrive. If I thank God for the good things in my life, why don't I thank him for the bad things, the Bible says. So you'd know that if you'd be reading your Bible. Okay? Uh, how wonderful that something is missing or that I lack something because this is my chance to get something better. Huh? Absolutely. So as we repeat each and every day, Jesus, I trust in you. We trust in Jesus that the new wine is on the way. Huh? New wine. And that it will all be fine because God is with me and if God is with me, no one can be against me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Did that help a little in the midst of everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's good. Perfect. And Julie says, we got to get one of those Bibles. <laughs> yeah, there actually is a, it's a very, very good translation of the Bible. Where do you start reading the Bible? Start from the Gospel of Mark. Okay, perfect. St. Augustine said, you know what St. Augustine said? This is, he's the saint that we get the Bible from because he put it together with the bishops in the year 391 at the Council of Carthage. He said, you know what, folks? He said to all the people, he used to give these four-hour sermons, okay? You know what he said to all the, his congregation? He preached for four hours, not for 10 minutes like I do, okay? You know, 10 minutes, uh, okay? <laughs> He'd say, folks, learn how to dance and sing because the angels and the saints won't know what to do with you in heaven if you don't. Hmm? So learn how to dance and sing, everybody. Okay, let's stand and profess our faith. On the screens, we have our creed, the Nicene Creed, as we say, I believe in one God, the Father, 